Hi, we're Mark and Katie Cheney, and as we talked about in our previous video, this is um, step one, self-love. And so we're going to talk about things like self-talk and give and receive compliments, uh, learning about self, uh, self-love, mm -hmm. um, just the stuffs really, how you, yeah. how you show yourself self-love. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, another thing is masculine and feminine energy. Um, we found was uh, very powerful in this process. And then, of course, investing in ourselves. Yep. Yeah, so um, coming back to the beginning here, um, just so so you know, <laughs> uh, Kitty lit, led all this, and I just followed her example. I mean, we've gone through the classes together. We've gone through uh, personal training um, to where we get uh, right in our mental space. But uh, truthfully is that I supported her in this whole process and used my superpower of time management to keep us on track and she used her superpower of education to make sure that I also stayed uh, mentally um, positive through this whole process. Yeah. Yeah, because the first two weeks were pretty difficult. And then after that, we got into a routine. We did. Yeah. So, um, but uh, with our self-talk, we started with positive affirmations. Mm -hmm. So with positive affirmations, we all have negative self-talk in our heads, negative thoughts that are going on. And so we started, and I suggest that you start with writing down a list of those negative thoughts, whatever the most common thoughts are that come to your mind, that you just keep hearing over and over and over again. Write them down. You'll probably have somewhere between five to ten. And uh, you're going to take those, those negative thoughts and write the opposite. So if it's, I'm stupid, you're going to write, I'm smart. If it's, I'm fat, you're going to write, I'm slim. Um, whatever the negative thoughts are, write the, the opposite. And then you're going to add one more. Because the number one thing that we get uh, attacked on in our in our minds is about our bodies. And so you're going write, to write one more positive message about your body. So again, going back to if it's I'm stupid, you'll write I'm smart and I'm beautiful. Or something like that. Some positive message about your body. So now you'll have a list of positive affirmations. Custom designed to you to address your negative thoughts. And it's kind of cool as you, as you keep repeating those. Repeat them every morning, every evening. Frequently during the day, anytime you hear those negative thoughts coming up, but as you uh, repeat those, they, they'll gradually go quiet and those negative thoughts will go away and you'll start to have new ones. So then go through the process over again. When you start hearing diff different negative thoughts, change your, uh, change your affirmations. Just go through and custom design them again for the new thoughts that are hitting you. So that's your first step is on self-talk, positive affirmations. It's a very basic piece to start with. Very simple and easy to start with that. Um, next, we moved on to mirror talk. Mm -hmm. I would stand in front of the mirror where frequently many of us stand there and go, oh, I'm ugly, I don't look good, whatever. I would stand there and say, I love you. I'm beautiful. And I would look myself in the eyes and declare these positive things about myself. Mm -hmm. um, I'd stay off the scale. Yeah. But I mean, with, with me, with the with mm -hmm. the self-love and, and doing the mirror talk, mm -hmm. um, it was usually after getting out of the shower and yeah. that was observing the uh, transformation my body was going through. Mm -hmm. So I was noticing on a daily basis what the changes were. Um, and so I was uh, seeing progress. Yeah. And sometimes you won't see progress. There was times where um, I really struggled and I wasn't seeing it, but I knew from past experience, um, because I've done diets before, or I've lost a massive amount of weight, I knew that there would be times when I'd plateau and then I'd just work through it and be able to move to the mm -hmm. next step. But it still kept doing the positive self-talk as I'm looking in the mirror. Yes. So with the uh, mirror talk, this is something you want to do before you ever start a diet and during the diet. Mm -hmm. For me, a good chunk of it was before. For Mark, a good chunk of it was during. Either way, you want to do a lot of, of mirror talk, speaking positively to yourself about yourself. Um, and then the staying off the scale. Yes, staying off the scale. I stayed off of it because it just generated more negative thoughts. I stayed off of it for years before we started a well, diet. That's why you never had a weight problem because you never got on the scale. So you never you didn't know how did, much I weighed. Yep. Didn't, didn't make it's a difference. True. Didn't make a difference. I, yeah. I did not want those numbers in my head um, critiquing me. And of course, during the during the process of the of the weight release, I did get on the scale, but we'll talk more about that later. Um, okay, we celebrated small achievements. Yeah. Every little small achievement that I had as any progress towards a goal, I would find every little small achievement to celebrate, whether it was in weight release or anything else. This was long before we started this diet. We would work on recognizing small achievements in any goal we were going mm -hmm. towards and celebrating those. 
even if it's just a little fist pump, anything to celebrate the the achievements that we're making. I mean, it would be something as crazy as finding a penny on the ground uh -huh. and we'd achieve, hey, we're one penny richer. I mean, just it didn't have to do with our, our weight loss. It had to do with our mental space totally. and how we perceived what was what we were receiving in our mm -hmm. lives. So it wasn't just about what we could get, but also how we could receive and how we opened ourselves up to receiving. Exactly. Every then, little small thing. And then positive music. Oh, positive music. I mean, so, if you have a smart device um, in your home, whichever it is, mm -hmm. whatever brand you have, um, set it up so it's got a skill to where, um, like at nine o'clock at night, we have sway music. So mm -hmm. we uh, we come into our bedroom and the music playing, and so then we we sway. Or if you're, you know, after uh, you know coming into the kitchen or whatever, we end up having uh, something like Andy Graham or something mm -hmm. positive music um, that's uh, going to help and uplift us because what you feed your brain mm -hmm. is, you know, what goes in into you is also going to show out of you and that was part of our process too is that we wanted what we felt inside ourselves to actually show how we were on the outside and that helped with the transformation yes the, the music you get the tunes going in your head and you sing them over and over and that becomes the verbiage of your negative thoughts so we really really watched what we were putting in our minds and music with its catchy tunes oh it's so easy to repeat those lyrics over and over again we wanted positive lyrics in our minds, not the negative. The negative just pulls us down and makes it harder to achieve our goals. We didn't want that. We wanted it easier. Um, and then books. Positive books. Oh, my yeah. goodness. I mean, books. you're an avid reader. Yes. But we discovered um, audiobooks mm -hmm. and um, podcasts mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of different ways to be able to get those that information yes. in, inside and be able to internalize mm -hmm. it. Um, but uh, sometimes those books are kind of dry and... <laughs> And hard to get through sometimes and so that's where um, we had discussions we were able to bounce stuff mm -hmm. off of each other yep lots and lots of positive books positive podcasts audible i would listen to books while i'm driving around just anything to get that positive into my mind the more positive in there the less room there is for negative and so that encompasses our self-talk multiple things there's there's more i'm sure uh that we have done there absolutely is more but those are the basic things that we did to raise our positive self-talk so that we were speaking positively towards our future. Next was giving and receiving compliments. Now with giving and receiving compliments, it is so easy. You watch people and it is so easy when someone says, oh, you look so nice and they will take their hand. And literally, if you picture that compliment yeah. is a, a package, when you give this wonderful package to someone, you watch them, they will go, oh, it's nothing. And they take mm -hmm. that little package that has been given and push it out of the way and throw it to the ground. Don't do that. We would take those compliments and I would hit, pick up that package, yep. scoop it up and bring it to my heart. Yep. Thank you. Nothing else needs to be said. Just thank you. Yeah, no discounting. I, no discounting. I would practice receiving compliments. Thank you. And one of the early on experiences that I had with this, we I was put, see, I was in a personal growth course and we were all standing in a circle. There's probably about 50 50 of us. So we're standing in a circle, half the group facing out and half the group facing in, facing each other. And the uh, direction was given that uh, the inside group was to give a compliment to the people on the outside group. And the outside group could say nothing except thank you. Nothing else. Not, oh, this old thing or, oh, that's easy or you're so kind or I mean, none of that. Just mm -hmm. thank you. That was so hard to do. People in that outside circle were bawling. It was so hard to just simply hear a compliment and not brush it away. I challenge you to receive compliments. Scoop them up, bring them to your heart, say thank you. It's so easy to, to redirect and don't, don't even redirect and go, oh, thank you so much, my ears are nice too, because you're just redirecting. You're sending it right back. Just thank you. Take it in, receive it then you can give them a compliment. Well, an example of that would be um, in the movie Good Will Hunting, mm -hmm. where Robin Williams' character is, is saying, it's not your fault, and just kept saying it over and over until the man, the, the boys understood what he was saying yeah. and how it affected him. Um, so just open yourself up, have that give and receive cycle, um, be able to accept compliments, mm -hmm. and then also be able to give them. And you'll find that uh, that also fits into the self-love because to be able to give an honest, 
um, compliment to someone, you also have to feel that yourself. Yeah. So I would watch for opportunities to give honest compliments. And it's so easy to give a compliment on, oh, your outfit's so cute. But that's something about what they are wearing that's external to them. Mm -hmm. I would look for opportunities to give internal compliments. You have such a nice smile or you're so sweet. You're so kind. You're so thoughtful. You're so smart. Anything like that, the internal compliments. I would do external if I needed to, if I couldn't find anything else, but I would be searching for internal compliments mm -hmm. to give people as much as possible because that helped me to recognize the internal characteristics about them. Mm -hmm. And I would automatically start seeing the internal characteristics about me more often, not just my own external characteristics. So it opened my awareness to that. I started seeing it in others and I would see it more in myself. We would give compliments to each other. Oh, yeah. Constantly. Constantly. <laughs> yeah. You look handsome. I love your outfit. You're uh -huh. so kind to help me with that. I love how you take care of me. Yeah. All those kind of things. Yeah. Or I would I would just flirt with you on a uh -huh. regular basis. Regular flirting. Oh. Yes. You're very good at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it also helped with the process mm -hmm. because um, as I was feeling joy, mm -hmm. I would share that joy with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next step here is a uh, comparison. Um, you know, a comparison, comparison is a thief of joy. It is. You know, so you don't want to compare yourself to how others are doing and in, in their progress because mm -hmm. you are an individual chemical being and how you're going to respond mm -hmm. to this process is completely different from anybody else. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, you can take cues from what other people are doing, but it does not reflect on you individually because you as a person have a completely different makeup from anyone else. Yes. So don't compare yourself to how someone else is able to do something that seems so easy because you have no idea what the internal struggle is that's going on with them. Very true. In those compliments, Never say, oh, you look so fabulous, I look terrible. That's comparison. Don't do it. Just, you look fabulous today. That's all you got to say. There's no reason to discount yourself. Um, yeah, and, and no reason to say, oh, she looks so fabulous, I look terrible. Or she's amazing at that and I'm terrible at it. Just stop it all. The yep. comparison is not necessary and not helpful. And it's not a competition. It's not. And so, I mean, you need to have full recognition and appreciation of the progress that you're making in this and mm -hmm. the decision you've made to go on this journey, mm -hmm. regardless of how many start and stops you may make or how many, you know, I mean, it's make it a fun process, gamify it, yeah. you know, that's, that's the other totally. thing we found is gamifying things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Gamifying is fun. We'll talk about that one later, though. Um, so, yeah, no competition, just full recognition of what they're doing. And they can be amazing all on their own. And you can be amazing all on your own. Appreciation for what others have done for you without any comparison linked into it. Nothing else needs to be said. Just a thank you or you're welcome or wow, you did amazing. That's all. You don't need the comparison. It just tears things down. Um, and then you have the mirror words. Yes, more and, and the post-it notes. Yeah, all over the house. <laughs> oh man, talk about flirting! My goodness, you put up a whole lot of those. I'm finding uh -huh. them. I'm still finding them. Oh, yeah, I don't. Well, tell them what post-it notes are about. Oh, so she put up post-it notes that are um, like "You're my champion," or um, she puts a smiley face on something. So, like here in the studio, she she posted a smiley face, so I would mm -hmm. find it. And it just lifted my day every time I'd find these uh, positive affirmations and how she felt about me, mm -hmm. you know, and the compliments and, um, you know, the champion hero, mm -hmm. um, you know. You're handsome. I love yeah, you. Thank, thank you, you for taking care of me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I, I, I do all most of the cooking. And so she puts things on the inside of the cabinet doors mm -hmm. saying, ooh, that spice the other day was great. And just, you know, little things, mm -hmm. just yep. little pick-me-ups. So post-it notes I have placed all over the house for him to find because he loves that. Just positive little comments all over the house. Mirror words is take a dry erase mar marker and write positive things on the mirror. Then you see it every morning when you're doing that mirror talk. You see it when you're getting ready. Write, I'm beautiful. Write, you're handsome. What, whatever. Mm -hmm. Write positive things on the mirror. Write your positive affirmations up there. It's just another way to see it. Your mind will see it out of the corner of your eye, even if you're not reading it in the moment. That positive helps. 
I love doing this one for our kids too. I would sneak into their bathrooms and write positive things on their mirrors so that it was getting into their minds. Um, then we had regaining balance. Yeah. So both of us were a little bit off balance. One of the examples, um, just a physical example I like to share is this would be two adults standing upright next to each other. We weren't acting that way. I was bent over backwards and self-sacrificing. He was bent into my space, taking more advantage of, of space that mm -hmm. I was allowing. And uh, I was more self-serving. You were. Um, and this was early on in our marriage. We have learned how to stand upright and both be adults with each other and not be bending over, uh, bending over the other, pushing around or mm -hmm. um, bending backwards and self-sacrificing. We now stand upright. But one of those things is I was self-sacrificing. I was showing more love to others by sacrificing myself, saying that I wasn't good mm -hmm. enough to deserve that attention. And so I learned how to take care of myself and stand myself upright. I learned how to... And by um, doing so, that also meant that I became more aware of yes. her needs mm -hmm. and less focused on my own needs. Mm -hmm. So that give and receive cycle came back again. Yes. And uh, you learned to show more love to me and mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. I learned to show more love to me and others. Right. Um, or more love to me right. uh, rather than to others. Yeah. And we learned how to respect each other better in that regard. And uh, that was very, very beneficial as, as we learned to do that, stand up and be adults. I stood up for myself. He backed off a bit and chose to um, chose to show more love and concern for me and everybody else around. And through that process, we were able to find out, you know, who am I? Mm -hmm. you know, um, define more of who am I? Because, yeah. I mean, I know. I know who I am. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. Everybody knows who they are. But who am I to myself? Yeah. So I was, I was asked in a course at one point, a self-development course that I went to, I was asked the question of, who are you? And the rules around answering it was, I was not allowed to say anything that I did or that I, um, that I did for others. So I was not allowed to say, I'm a realtor or I'm a mom or I'm a first. None of those kind of things was I allowed to say. I could only say something about who I am as an individual being. Mm -hmm. Adjectives, characteristics about me. I couldn't think of any. Um, well, not any. I, I could think of, I'm a child of God. And that, that's about it. That is the, the primary, simple childhood answers. I couldn't think of anything more. I was stuck. So I took, um, I came out of that. And we had seen the movie, um, if you've seen the movie Runaway Bride with uh, Julia Roberts, mm -hmm. where she shifts her own personality for each one of these guys that she's potentially marrying. She doesn't even know how she likes her eggs. It's how she likes eggs prepared. It's kind of funny watching that movie, but uh, it felt a lot look, like my situation at that time. I didn't know who I was. I did so much of becoming who I needed to be for others. I didn't know who I was on my own, just me. And so I actually took the next two weeks, I took a, a challenge and stopped doing anything for anybody else for two mm -hmm. weeks. And all the things that I've People would ask me, can you do this? Can you do that? And I would always say yes. I started saying no. It was so hard. It was really hard to do that. But the other two weeks, what type of eggs do you like? <laughs> oh, I like eggs Benedict. Oh, I love, love eggs Benedict. Benedict. Exactly. Love <laughs> eggs Benedict. But I also like sunny side up and fried eggs, the way you make them. You like fried eggs. Um, yep. I like quite a few varieties of, and I like hard boiled eggs, and I like deviled eggs, and I, I like a variety. Um, but my favorite is definitely... Definitely, Ace Benedict. Yeah. Anyway, um, so I spent the next two weeks saying no to anything that people asked me to do for them because that had been my old self-sacrificing, become who I needed to be for someone else. And I spent those two weeks figuring out what I liked, what I liked to do. I tried a bunch of different potential hobbies because I didn't even know what my hobbies were. I spent all my time doing things for other people. So I tried a bunch of different hobbies and figured out some things that I enjoy doing. And I, I just took care of me and figuring out me for the next two weeks. And it was really hard to say no. I figured everybody would be mad at me. They weren't. Um, I survived just fine. And I learned an awful lot about me. And so if you're stuck in that self-sacrificing, I would suggest take a couple weeks and say no. It's not that <laughs> terrible. Um, and at least I knew what you were doing when you did it. Yes. It didn't come as a surprise. Yes. 
Yeah. True. Good. Now I did still like make dinner for my family. I did laundry, all the, all those basic things I did do, but the extra stuff that I was uh, really self-sacrificing, I stopped it all for two weeks. And then I have only picked up a little bit of it ever since. Mm -hmm. I yeah. took up a lot of that. You did? Yeah. So um, next, next tool for you is a self-love binder. Oh, this was this a, is good. Yeah, this this was one that uh, that we got challenged to do in another self, um, self development course, as we were challenged to write uh, to call or write an email or a letter to our friends and family, mm -hmm. and ask for letters back, stating what they appreciated or liked or noticed about us mm -hmm. in a positive way. Well, that was kind of hard. It was kind of hard. It was hard to ask. It was but, very hard to ask. That, that but felt... surprisingly, what came back was, well, quite emotional. And quite, yes. We, yeah. we got some very, we got some that were just ascendants and some that were whole long letters. I asked for just a quarter of a page and I had some people giving me a three quarters of a page mm -hmm. or a full page. And I was like, wow, wow. I, you know, yeah. I had no idea on how the world saw me. Mm -hmm. Um I only knew, you know, what I see, what I see in the mirror, in my mm -hmm. perception. And, I mean, that book, How yeah. the World Sees You, is, like, that was groundbreaking, too. Yeah. But uh, how to actually get those letters back um, was an affirmation. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was really it was cool. Really, really cool. We each got multiple letters back. Um, and we have kept all of those letters. So mm -hmm. here's your self-love binder. We challenge you to write uh a request out to your friends and family mm -hmm. and ask for a ask for a quarter of a page description of what they appreciate about you what they see as your talents what they see as your strengths what they love about you just ask for it back and you what made it easy for me is i would offer and if you think this is a cool idea i can write the same back to you and multiple people went yeah i'd really love to hear that that's a great idea so that softens it a little bit if you get to do the, the exchange of give and receive. Because mm -hmm. um, it, it was hard to ask for at first. But mm -hmm. I challenge you to ask for that because it's really cool what you get back. What, what amazing things people see about you. So we kept all of those letters. We put them in a binder. And then ever since then, we have been adding to it. And we will add any time uh, a friend writes a, a note to us and says, thank you so much for this characteristic. Or I really appreciate that about you. We will add those in there. Mm -hmm. Random little notes our kids wrote when they were little. Mm -hmm. Say, Mom, I love you because of this or that. I've kept those. Yeah. Um, testimonials that clients have, have given us. I keep those mm -hmm. in there. All of those positive things that say something about me, something positive about me, I keep them all in there. And when I am struggling, when I'm just feeling down and, and challenged and dealing with a hard time and I just can't see much of anything good, I will go back and remind myself, oh, yeah. All these people mm -hmm. see all of these positive things in me and it builds me back up yeah. and it, it makes it really easy. I don't need to go hunting for compliments, mm -hmm. which many of us do. I have them all right there. I can go refill myself and yeah. it's, it's pretty awesome. And reprogramming that uh, reticular activating system mm -hmm. that tells you all the things you can't do because mm -hmm. here's the files in my head telling me I'm, I'm this, I'm that, or I'm not this, I'm not that. And here you've got external mm -hmm. proof. Um, that you are more than what you think you are mm -hmm. because of the people you've affected in your lives. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's, that's a game changer. Uh, oh, it was huge. If you're going to use, you know, game changer, then that, that was a game changer. That one has been pretty powerful for both of us. So the next step is our personality tests. We took Clifton Strength, mm -hmm. Discs. We took the, the one that's in the book, um, mm -hmm. How the World Sees You. Yep. So in... In my years in personal growth, I love personal growth. And in, in my years uh, working in this arena, I have done at least six personality tests, um, six that I can name that I remember. But uh, the first one Mark uh, mentioned was How the World Sees You. This is a book by Sally Hogshead. It comes with a test that places you in one of 49 different archetypes and uh, each one of those being a slightly different personality. And within each archetype, she will let you know what your strengths are, your weaknesses, mm -hmm. what other personalities are archetypes it's best for you to connect up with, um, to achieve big goals. Doesn't necessarily mean your spouse needs to be that mm -hmm. archetype, but you may search for that in, uh, in business or in a project you're achieving. 
to partner up with, uh, with a particular type to help bring out your strengths and minimize your weaknesses. So that's one that was very beneficial to us. Um, you had mentioned the DISC assessment. Mm -hmm. The DISC assessment is a great one. It's a classic out there. There's free, free uh, website access that you can uh, go take that assessment. That's been very, uh, uh, very informative to us and very helpful. But the big one that was most helpful to us, oh my goodness, rocked our worlds, was the Clifton Strengths Assessment. Yeah. And you just do a search for that one online, but that Clifton Strengths Assessment ranks you on 34 different strengths. And no weaknesses at all, it's all strengths. And you can, however, take those weaknesses and lean into them too heavy and turn them into a weakness. Um, but strengths, you can lean into yes. heavy and turn them into a weakness. Yes, you can learn into any, lean into any strength too, too strongly and it becomes a weakness. Mm -hmm. um, we've all seen that with, with some people who are, they have a talent in one area, um, maybe they're detailed, but they get too detailed and then, then it becomes a weakness. So that's how that one works. Mm -hmm. But uh, the Clifton Strengths Assessment, we had an area in our marriage where we were just butting heads like crazy. Just, it was the same argument over and over and over again all the time. I just, it kept coming up. And when we took the Clifton Strengths Assessment, what we discovered is that we were butting heads over his weakness. I'm sorry, not his weakness, no, no. his strength, strength, his number one strength and my number one strength. We're butting heads. And once we recognize them as, oh, that's your strength. That's not something dumb that you're doing. That's actually your amazing superpower. Well, here's my amazing superpower and here's how that works. And once we learned and recognized those as superpowers, as number one strengths, wow, we yeah. have completely shifted. How we interact with each other and, and others and others and who, others who have yes. actually taken the the test and totally. we found out what their superpowers uh -huh. were and i was like oh it was, total what you're doing. it was a total epiphany and it changed everything not just yes. how we felt about ourselves but totally. how we felt about others uh -huh. and how we were relating to mm -hmm. self and others yep um that was that was the big one for us that was huge and yeah. now i give him space to use his superpower and, and I'm more patient uh -huh. with her superpower yep. because it, it, just, we, the, just the way our dynamics work between the two of totally us, different. totally different. But now we're grateful for mm -hmm. the superpowers that we have. Um, and we do call them superpowers because, I mean, they really, I they mean, really are. they really are. <laughs> it's not just, uh, you know, a comic, you know, um, something you say that someone no. has superpowers it really is it really a superpower is. and it's something that that they have um what's the word predilection yeah I yeah so. predilection for mm -hmm. and um it just all of a sudden once you see that you're going oh that makes total sense and the story comes complete and you're just going <laughs> okay and now you can see how you can work better with another person mm -hmm. and make that progress yes yeah. so i strongly suggest you go and investigate the clifton strengths assessment very beneficial Ch totally changed our perspective about each other and about many others in our lives and now we just get along so much better so much mm -hmm. better and then there's another thing that we learned mm -hmm. feminine and masculine energy yes that was where uh, so in short feminine energy attracts mm -hmm. and so if i was to so give an example i was going to go out hunting for a deer basically i just had to go out the front door because she attracted it the deer's right there boom done easy yes if we're in balance mm -hmm. with the feminine and the masculine, it doesn't mean that I'm all masculine and that you're all feminine. No. Nope. No, but we do have our masculine and feminine sides, mm -hmm. and uh, taking advantage of that is feeds back into that law of attraction, that uh, give and receive cycle. Yes, it does. So a masculine energy is a doing energy. It's very protective. It's a, the provider. You think about the lone cowboy out in the wilderness, and he's, he's going to come and, and take care of the fair maiden. And he's going to provide with that deer, and he's he's alone. He's uh, he's very protective. He's very uh, um, individualistic. Individualistic, yep. Yeah. And he's he's a strong provider. Whereas femi uh, feminine energy with us women, you know, we all enjoy going to the bathroom together. That's we're together energy, not alone energy. And we are being energy, not doing. Mm -hmm. um, we are in the moment. We are uh, pampering and soaking up that wonderful hot bubble bath. We're, we're enjoying in the moment things and we are nurturing and caring for mm -hmm. it. That's why we're, we just naturally care for everyone around us. Mm -hmm. um, that's that's a more of the feminine energy. Feminine energy is magnetic. It pulls things to us. It's a pulling energy. Masculine energy is a pushing energy. 
it gets things done it completes things mm -hmm. um, we both need both every mm -hmm. every person on this planet has both energies and we both need to use both if i was entirely in my feminine i would lie around in a bubble bath eating bonbons all day i would get nothing Under done a heavy blanket and in a bubble bath no <laughs> after the bubble bath okay and if he was in masculine energy all the time he would just be constantly getting things done and not care about anybody not care about any individual people and so it's it's important that we both have both but for women we need to lean into our feminine more we need to, to bookend our days morning and evening with feminine energy um we need to have about 60 percent of our day in feminine energy men about 60 percent of their day in masculine energy lean into the masculine morning and evening and so it, it's that's an important consideration when we are more in our feminine energy us women we get more done and we stay out of stress i know that seems backwards because we're not in doing energy but we actually are accomplishing more if we are in feminine energy and we accomplish more without the stress when we're leaning too heavily into masculine energy oh my goodness we get stressed to the max and cranky and bossy and demanding and it's no fun to be around us and so we have and that's um, where i give a pour a bubble bath for you oh, yes when i get mm -hmm. too heavy into masculine energy he goes and I runs me about lotion on your back mm -hmm. places you can't reach yeah. um i bring you a heavy blanket uh-huh uh -huh. and um i bring you sugar-free hot chocolate oh, yes <laughs> it gets me cozied up to where i can be in the moment and not trying to do 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 but mm -hmm. just be be myself be feminine in that moment enjoy that moment and it brings me back into feminine energy and then i can get back to what i'm doing and i flow with it mm -hmm. and i accomplish more you, you've all i'm sure felt uh, to some degree that when, when you're just in flow and things are just moving and you don't even have to work at it that's when you're flowing in feminine energy for us women mm -hmm. and uh, for men they'll hit that point a little more often because our whole world teaches us uh, to be in masculine energy the whole our whole culture is about mm -hmm. masculine energy and rewarding that but i tell you for us women we get so much more um so many more of our goals accomplished we get so much more done we get so much more connection and we feel more fulfilled if we are living more in feminine energy and it's, it's a pretty powerful space to be in what um, about your hobbies oh okay so part of feminine energy is indulging in play in fun and so all those hobbies that I learned about back when I was figuring out who I am and what I like, I now indulge in those more often. I enjoy sewing. I enjoy embroidery. I enjoy puzzles. Mm -hmm. um, there are fun things that I enjoy doing. And so I will take time for those as a way of pampering myself and being in the moment because I'm not thinking about all the things I need to get done. I'm just enjoying my hobby for that moment yeah, and you've I got like, hobbies too well i like being in creation mode mm -hmm. so i'll go out in the wood shop and i'll uh, make jewelry boxes or mm -hmm. i'll um, have a bigger project like a saddle holder or, or or something like that or some of the other things that i've done um, but uh, i like being in creation mode mm -hmm. so even that's even being on set and, and uh, even if i'm an extra mm -hmm. just acting yep. i'm in creation mode and that rejuvenates me and that that uh, fulfills me because I'm creating something, whether yep. it's for myself or for someone else. Mm -hmm. the, the hobbies are huge in uh, pampering and self-care and taking time for those and declaring that, that I deserve it. I deserve that time um, to spend just doing something fun for me. It doesn't have to get anything done. It's just fun for me. Um, another clothing, way. Clothing. Clothing. And that is another way that we took care of ourselves and uh, practice that feminine energy of being mm -hmm. um of just caring for ourselves is with clothing for me th let me say it this way many people when they're feeling overweight which i was definitely overweight uh many people when they're feeling that way will force themselves to wear ugly clothing because only people who are slim look good in their mindset not accurate um but that's that's a mindset that many people choose mm -hmm. i chose go get the cute clothing Go get it now i chose to love myself now mm -hmm. enough and make myself look cute and dress fabulous and i i had a fabulous wardrobe at that size um at the you size did. i was at i did yeah. and i i felt like i looked cute and i would look in the in the mirror and go "Ooh, i look cute today mm -hmm. i look beautiful today and i i would i would really dress myself up nice and i would get the cute clothes and take care of myself that way and dress cute and mm -hmm. and admire myself in the mirror 
Mm -hmm. And for me, it was quality clothes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just the cute clothes. I, yeah. I wanted, I wanted the nice suit. I wanted mm -hmm. the nice shirt. I wanted shoes. You <laughs> are a shoe guy more than <laughs> I am. Yep. Boots, mm -hmm. shoes. Yeah. And so, and then uh, the accessories, mm -hmm. you know, um, and I felt that, that that helped uplift me. If I was feeling um, down in the day, I would get out of my jeans and t-shirt and I'd put on a button-up shirt or I'd put that on and I'd put on a nice sweater. Um, I'd um, put on my, uh, my, instead of my regular everyday jeans, I'd put on you know, my dress jeans. Mm -hmm. um, instead of walking around the house barefoot or in socks or whatever, I'd put on my shoes. As mm -hmm. if I was going to go somewhere, even if I wasn't going somewhere that day, because um, we work from home, um, mm -hmm. I would dress as if I was going somewhere because that helped me see myself mm -hmm. better. It uplifted my spirits. It kept me able to see the possibilities mm -hmm. in being able to move forward. Yep. It's, it's, and so I invested in myself. You did. There's, there's uh, studies, scientific studies about how important it is to smile when you're in, um, oh, what is it? When you're on a phone call. Yeah. Uh, just to smile when you're on the phone because it, it comes across to dress nice even if you're staying home if if you have the opportunity to work from home like we do you could just work in your PJs all day we could too or but, us. but the attitude that you have that you carry forward into your day shifts when you actually get dressed for the day get dressed nice wear nice clothes do your hair do your makeup all of that your, your attitude shifts about how you feel about yourself and how you interact with others. It's important. Get yourself dressed up, take a shower, and do your hair, do your makeup. Um, wear, wear the cute clothes, wear the quality clothes, whatever it is that's important to you that makes you feel like you're looking nice today. And that, that's important stuff. And then give yourself permission to invest in yourself. Yes. Um, you know, so if, you're, if it's nice clothes for you, or for you, you uh, bought yourself a car. I did, I bought myself a car. I, I hit a point in my self-love um so our our health journey started uh well we started the diet earlier in in january last day of january of 2022 um but i bought that car in november and in november i just had this wild hair idea that i wanted a nice little sports car yep. I, I wanted that little car and it just started as an idea and oh i it seems like this frivolous thing to do and it's big and it's unnecessary. No, we don't need it. We've got other things we're doing. And, and my sweet husband kept saying, no, we've, we've set aside, mm -hmm. the, we've got the money that we could do that. We budgeted and, for it. We, we yeah, set the goal. We did. We set the goal. We budgeted. We, we, and we found the car and oh my goodness, it was fun. And it, it was a fun, extra, unnecessary thing just because I wanted it. Just because I was capable of it because I had set myself up for that. Your big expensive luxury thing may not be a car. It may be, I don't know, it may be a fancy outfit. It may be, at one point for me, it was a leather jacket. That was a big expensive unnecessary thing. Or a cruise. Um, or... or a cruise. It may be travel. It, may, it could be all sorts of different things. For me, it was a car. And that was my big unnecessary thing that was just because I wanted it. Because then... I loved myself enough to declare I deserved it and I could have it. And then, and because then, of the car, and because and then, of the process we were going through, yes. and and our goals for achieving mm -hmm. or reshaping ourselves, I we hadn't even achieved that. I, no, that wasn't even in my mind. No, yet. it wasn't. So, but you set this up, okay, as on. if you had a premonition. So go on, tell okay. them. Okay. So I bought the car in November, and I was thoroughly enjoying the car and just enjoying having it, enjoying driving it, enjoying being in it, and then. I had this another just random thought, nothing planned out, just a random thought of, I remembered a previous coach of mine that had done a photo shoot, a photo shoot just of her, not a family photo shoot or a business photo shoot, but a photo shoot just of her, just because she wanted to, uh, she wanted to feel beautiful in the photo shoot. She wanted to celebrate where she was at. She wanted to uh, be flirty and fun and feel like a magazine star, all of that kind of stuff. She just did a photo shoot, just of her, just because. And I remembered hearing about that and thinking, well, that would be cool, but I didn't feel like I would look good in it, and I didn't think I would like the photos or anything. So I let that sit in my mind for a while. Well, here, after buying this, this after all this uh, self-love um, actions that we've been taking, 
and then I bought this car and then the, I just had the thought, I want to do a photo shoot. And as I was thinking about it, something popped up on Facebook of a gal uh, photographer who was doing a, a whole challenge photo shoot of uh, 50 women. No, it was 40 women over 40, the 40 over 40 uh, show she was doing. And she was offering a discount of on, on a photo shoot of a photo session for a woman over 40. I'm, like, I'm over 40. I could do this. And I looked at some of the photos of, of the uh, other women that had participated in her, in her shoot. And I loved it. I'm like that would be celebrating me for who I am. Now, keep in mind at this point, I didn't, hadn't started the diet. I hadn't even thought of starting a diet. I was still on, I'm not stepping on a scale. I look beautiful in the mirror. I'm wearing the cute clothes at the, my larger size. And that's where I was at, at the point that I chose to start a photo shoot or to book a photo shoot. Mm -hmm. I booked it for April. So I bought the car in November. I booked the photo shoot in December for April mm -hmm. because I wanted photos with my fun car. And it's a convertible little sports car. And here in Utah, convertible cars in the snow are just not ideal. And doing a photo shoot that way, also not ideal, but by April, it would be looking great. So again, I still have not started a diet, have not even thought of doing it. Um, but that's in December and early in December. And then we come around to January. And in January, I just get this thought, just a random thought that, hmm, I think I'm ready. And I didn't start all this self-care stuff, this self-love stuff to get myself ready to lose weight. That wasn't part of it. It was mm -hmm. self-love because I needed to love myself. Mm -hmm. But I did hit a point saying, because I was I was aware I was a, a larger size. I knew that. I mean, it's obvious. You can tell. But um, I didn't feel fat. I didn't feel overweight. I didn't feel huge. I didn't feel ugly. I felt beautiful. Mm -hmm. I felt valuable. I felt love for myself. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to have a lot of extra on me. And I got this feeling of, all of this extra on top of me has got to go for me to be who I really am. Who I really am is hiding inside and this stuff is covering me up. It wasn't that this stuff is part of me and has to go or that I, it's really in, interesting that tiny little mindset shift of this has to go for me to be me. Mm -hmm. It was not that this has to go for me to be beautiful or for me to be valuable or for me to be anything. It's for me to be me. This stuff is covering me up and it has to go. And I went, wow, okay, that, that's a new thought. Okay, so that means starting a diet. And so my next thought was, okay, but I am not going to do this unless I'm really, really going to do it. Because we've done diets before, mm -hmm. um, but I am not going to do this unless I'm actually going to do it. I'm not interested in the roller coaster. That is not happening again. If I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And so I, I checked in with myself just like minutes after, if not seconds after this feeling of, oh, for this to go, I've, it's, for me to be me, this has to go. Um, my Almost my next thought was, am I willing to actually do it, to stick with it? Because I had been emotionally eating. I had been doing all this, eating way too much. I would bake cookies and I would eat half half a dozen if not a full dozen, just because they were there and because they were yummy because I'm a good baker. Um, she is. <laughs> and I just had to think about, wait a second, am I actually ready to let go of that? And it occurred to me that, yes, yes, I am. I have learned enough tools of how to deal with my emotions, of how to achieve my goals, of how to love myself. I have learned enough that I'm ready. And I went and talked with Mark and he agreed he was ready. Mm -hmm. And we ordered a, a diet kit, went on a cruise, had a fabulous time eating whatever we wanted, came back, started the diet, six months, zero cheats. We're not even tempted because we were ready. And, and we, we got ourselves, ourselves right here. Yep. So that uh, when that opportunity came, we were ready to move forward. Mm -hmm. We loved ourselves enough mm -hmm. to stick with that goal. And in our next video, we'll tell you more of the next steps that we took once we started this diet. Sub click and subscribe at the bottom here, and we'll continue seeing you on as we tell you more about our journey. Yep. Talk to you next time.